Hi, everyone. I'm Susan Barron from the United Way's Women United Group and chair of this year's Community Baby Shower Committee. We're so excited to be here to celebrate with you today. Um, if you're comfortable, please put your name, your city, and your children's um, ages into the chat. The last few days have focused on health and safety, breastfeeding, and bringing home a newborn, and parenting support. As a reminder, all events from this week's Community Baby Shower can be viewed on United Way of Mass Bay's website. All of you that are attending today will be entered to, um, into a raffle to win a gift card, um, and the winner will be notified after the event. Today, we will be talking about connecting to family commu and community support and finding childcare. And with that, I'll pass it over to Shauna Vera from Tufts Health Plan for today's event. Take it away, Shauna. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Shauna from Tufts Health Plan's community relations team. We support communities in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Um, folks understand their health plan options and connecting people to important resources in their community. <clears throat> Today, we will have presenters talking about finding health insurance and benefits, child care and child care tax credit. Feel free to put questions in the Q&A as you have them. <clears throat> Staff will be keeping an eye on questions and we'll have time for Q&A after all of the presentations. <clears throat> we'll start off by hearing from myself and my colleagues at Tufts Health Plan Natasha and Christine talking about getting health insurance and connecting to resources like SNAP and WIC. Do we have slides coming? Yes, we do. Um, so today we'll be talking about accessing healthcare coverage and resources for you and your baby. Next slide, please. And you can go to the next slide. Um, so today I wanted to help folks understand what are your health care options if you need health insurance. Um, so for those of you who do not have health insurance or maybe you feel like the insurance you have is not affordable for you, just know there are programs available in each state for those without affordable insurance that is based on income, family size, and some other qualifications. Um, and so in each state, there is a program called Medicaid. In Massachusetts, it's called MassHealth. Um, in other states, it may have different names. Um, but Medicaid is free or low cost with no monthly premiums for those who qualify. For those who maybe don't qualify for Medicaid, there are other plans available called Qualified Health Plans or QHPs that are available in Massachusetts through the Health Connector or your state's exchange if you live outside of Massachusetts. Um, qualified health plans are subsidized and unsubsidized, meaning they are relatively pretty affordable. They have low or no monthly premiums depending on your eligibility. Um, and then for those who maybe don't qualify for subsidies, there are a host of other plans that are available that offer great benefits and affordable premiums and out-of-pocket costs. Um, and to figure out what you are, have available to you, you do have to apply first, which we'll get to in a few minutes. Next slide, please. Um, so to qualify for Medicaid or other subsidies, there are income requirements and other requirements that you have to meet. Um, you do have to live in Massachusetts or the state in which you're applying. So if you live in New Hampshire, you have to live in New Hampshire in order to, to get benefits through the state. Um, you do have to be either a US citizen or legally pre present resident. Um, there are income requirements, which I'll get to in a minute, and then you can't have other affordable health insurance. Um, for pregnant women and women with children, um, the income requirements vary slightly. Um, and for those who do have Medicaid while you're pregnant, it lasts your entire pregnancy and then 60 days postpartum to cover all of the visits that you have um, to get after you have your baby. Um, new babies for, for women who are already on Medicaid, your, your babies will be automatically covered through Medicaid. Um, once your baby's born, the hospital takes care of all of that, so you don't have to worry about it. Next slide, please. Um, so 
This is really just a, a guideline for people um, to have an understanding of what you might qualify for. Um, the first step, as I always tell people, is just to submit an application, um, put in all your information, the state will tell you what you qualify for, um, and, and then you can go from there. But for, for to give you an idea for Mass Health, um, if you're a family of one and you make less than about eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars $19,000, you qualify for Mass Health. For a family of five, that looks like about $45,000. Um, and then there's a sort of sliding scale as you go up so you can make more income. Your premiums might go up a little bit, your out-of-pocket costs might go up a little bit, but still very affordable. Um, and so for Connector Care, which is the subsidized program, um, for a family of five, you can make up to $90,000. Um, so there's a lot of wiggle room here um, for folks who, for, um, who need health insurance. Next slide, please. Um, and then lastly, how do you sign up? Um, so there's a, a lot of different ways you can sign up um, in Massachusetts. Um, as I mentioned, the first step is to submit an application. So you can either go onto the Health Connector's website at mahealthconnector.org. You can call the Health Connector or you can call Mass Health. Any one of them can help you over the phone. Um, if you feel like the application is a little bit complicated, just call somebody and they can help you. Um, there are in every state trained professionals that have experience in helping people apply for these benefits and understand you know, what the process is. Um, and you can go online again at mahealthconnector.org and look up navigators or enrollment assisters near you, make an appointment um, and they can help you either in person or over the phone. Once you find out what you qualify for, um, then you can pick your health plan. So there are health plans like Taos Health Plan or Boston Medical Center Health Net Plan or Neighborhood Health Plan. Um, they are all health plans that offer Medicaid and qualified health plans. Um, so once you find out what you're eligible for, you can choose from one of those health plans. Um, know that they all have the same standard covered benefits um, some health plans do offer additional benefits or perks like incentives for healthy behaviors, like maybe getting a gift card for going to your annual checkup or rewards for having a fitness membership, like a gym membership. Um, so they are essentially all of the same. The difference is sometimes cost and the provider network. Um, so before you choose a health plan, just make sure that if you have any doctors you want to continue seeing, that they're in the network of the plan that you want to join before you actually sign up. Um, and then a note for folks, I know all of what I've just said is really specific to Mass Health, um, sorry, Massachusetts. If you don't live in Massachusetts, every state has their own Medicaid and state-based exchange. Um, so check out your state's website or visit healthcare.gov for more information. And then I'm going to pass it off to Christine from our care management team to talk about care management. Thank you very much, Shanna. So hi, I'm Christine. I'm the manager of care management here at Tufts Health Plan. Our care management team is a team that will help connect members with support, resources, and services to help manage your health. We provide telephonic coaching from our OB nurse care managers. Uh, we coordinate with your doctor or midwife um, to implement, implement the care of plan that's specific to meet your needs. Our OB nurse care managers, managers will focus on complications with pregnancy, such as high blood pressure, gestational diabetes, multiple births, and other conditions. We also provide a lot of education and resources related to diet, medication, and childbirth resources. And we provide strategies to help support women that may be on bed rest and other doctor recommendations. So if you are a Tufts Health Plan member, we do offer care management um, for you if you have a high-risk pregnancy. If you don't, you can also um, have access to and care management. If you, um, it's important for you to check with your health plan to see if they have uh, care management for pregnant women. Next slide, please. We also, um, this is a great resource, Healthy Families. Uh, this is a great resource for teen, teen moms. They provide support during their pregnancies and up to your child's third birthday. So we recommend that you um, check this out. If you are in care management, most likely we will make a referral for you. 
So now I'll hand it off to Natasha. She's part of the OB team, community health worker and licensed practical nurse. Hi, good morning. My name is Natasha. Congratulations to all of you. Um, I will be discussing uh, or talking to you about two resources in your community that you would be able to access. Um, one of those being WIC, um, which is a program that provides um, nutrition support and education for all of our pregnant moms or members with families with kids that are under the age of five um, and any moms that are breastfeeding. Uh, so what happens with WIC is they, once you sign up, if you qualify, they send you a card, which you can use to go to any of the grocery stores to purchase um, healthy nutritional meals or foods. Um, they will also provide you with a voucher that you can use at the farmers, the local farmer's market to purchase fresh, fresh, fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, they also have a consultant for lactation. So if any moms are planning on doing any breastfeeding and you need that additional support or just education around that, they're great at helping you with that and supporting you through that. Um, any questions or anything you need about local resources, they also will do some referrals to those, okay? Uh, to be able to access this, um, you can use either their website, the, um, wicprograms.org, or go to the mass.cov's website and access it through um, their links or calling the 800 number that's provided below. Um, one of the other agencies that you might be able to access would be the transitional Department of Transitional Assistance, which helps um, local families um, with economic um, self-sufficiencies. Um, they provide with the SNAP, so what was usually called food stamps in the past. So you can go to the local grocery stores, you can purchase food products, um, for your family. Um, they also provide cash benefits to help you with um, some of your um, bills. Um, for their uh, members that do have cash or SNAP benefits, they also will help you with job training so you can find um, employment, interviewing skills. They'll set you up with agencies that will help you with um, doing your resumes. Um, and during the pandemic, they, um, they provided um, school age kids from the ages of 12 from the grades of K to 12 with a pandemic um, EBT cards. So they are loading that card every month for some of those families that have those kids within those schools that are providing free lunches. So once your kids are at home and they're doing either the hybrid or the remote learning, they will be getting some of that funding sent to them. Um, to access um, DTA, you can either go to the mass.gov site, access it through the 877 number or connecting with them through their DTA Connect app. Um, congratulations again to all of you. Um, I encourage you to reach out and utilize some of these resources that are available to you. They'll help you on this journey. And I'm gonna pass it back on to Shauna. Thank you. Um, if we can go to the next slide. Um, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what is a doula. Um, this is something that not everybody knows about, but this is a really great resource for, for women who are pregnant. Um, and, and have a new baby. Um, so a doula is somebody, they're a trained professional, they provide non-medical support um, during pregnancy, delivery, and postpartum. Um, so what that means is they're not a doctor, but they can support you with basically anything else that you need to have a healthy pregnancy, labor, and delivery. Um, so for, they help families know what to expect during pregnancy, labor, and delivery. Um, they can provide coaching for breastfeeding. Um, they help connect parents to resources and services in the community that they may need, whatever that means. Um, for you at the time, whatever you need, a doula can help connect you to those resources. Um, they can be there with you during labor and delivery if you want and you need extra support. Um, and they can also come visit you at your home after you have the baby um, to help, you know, get you settled in and get acclimated with um, life with a new baby. Um, so there are several reasons um, besides having additional support why a doula is a really great resource. Um, historically, um, doulas have been able to help uh, improve delivery outcomes. So have a safer pregnancy, a healthy delivery, fewer C-sections, um, maybe shorter labor. Um, and they really are just an advocate for you during your delivery. Um, you know, there's so much going on and they're there to be your voice and to help support you um, through whatever it is that you need. Um, uh, so doulas are a great resource. 
Um, if we can go to the next slide, I can give you information on how to find a doula. Um, so first, I would suggest asking your OB or your health insurance plan if they offer doula services that you can take advantage of. Um, I know Tufts Health Plans, Medicaid members, we have a no cost doula program that offers a doula to pregnant women um, during the last trimester of uh, their pregnancy. Um, I also put up a link here for you. Um, this is a national site, but you can put in your zip code and it gives you doulas near you that you can contact directly if you're interested in learning more. Um, and that is it for uh, our slides. I will pass this off um, to Lisa Champa from Lynn Economic Opportunity Head Start about connecting to childcare. Good morning and congratulations to all new and expecting parents. My name is Lisa Champa. I am the enrollment coordinator at Leo Head Start in Lynn, Massachusetts, also known as Lynn Economic Opportunity. We have an early... Good morning and congratulations to all new and expecting parents. My name is Lisa Champa. I am the enrollment coordinator at Lynn Economic Opportunity in Lynn, Massachusetts, also known as LEO. We have an early Head Start as well as Head Start program. The early Head Start program provides services to pregnant moms and children up to the age of three. We have an early Head Start as well as Head Start program. Quality child care Services are designed to nurture healthy attachments between parent and child or child and caregiver. We emphasize a strength-based relationship-centered approach and encompass the full range of family's needs from pregnancy through a child's third birthday. Next slide. The mission of Early Head Start is to promote healthy prenatal outcomes for pregnant women enrolled in Head Start programs to enhance the development of very young children and to promote healthy family functioning. Program options. We offer a home visit service for pregnant moms. You will be assigned a home visitor caseworker, dependent on the program. You will get weekly visits once a week for 90 minutes to discuss needs of the family, and it shares some educational information regarding prenatal education and services such as healthcare, health insurance information, early intervention, and what these things may look like. We offer a home-based program, which is also a weekly 90-minute home visit, as well as a group socialization opportunities with other families and children that are going through the same thing that you are going through. The home visitor will provide family focused visits that will support the child and the parent and the avail avail availability to support the child's development for the future. The center based program is an infant toddler classroom designed for parents who are working or in school. And we will provide early learning and enrichment with a focus on families. You'll get two home visits a year and more as needed per family. Next slide. Pregnant parents will be assigned, like I said a little while ago, a caseworker or family visitor dependent on the program. The visits will be once a week for 90 minutes or as needed for the family's services. Ongoing health care and insurance needs will be met. The caseworker or home visitor will help with assistance in filling out applications helping with getting copies of the documentations that will be required to complete these applications and other services as needed. Comprehensive services are also offered, food assistance, healthcare, mental health services, such as family and children's services. Um, we use them a lot. And there's also a service called South Bay, which is there for mental health and behavioral concerns. Um, the importance of sub substance abuse and why you should not be using any substances while you are pregnant. 
and emergency shelter transitional housing in cases of domestic violence. Here in our area, we use Hawk, which is help for abused women and children. Um, the services they can provide are emergency placement in a shelter and assistance with getting a restraining order through the police department. Prenatal and postpartum information is also offered through the family caseworker or home visitor. Um, postpartum recovery information and what that might look like, as well as what your labor and delivery may look like. The needs for appropriate support and the emotional well being. So, having a good family support, friends, family, just to be there in case you need to someone to talk to. They will also provide referrals to food, clothing, baby supplies diapers, we have an association in this area in Lynn actually called the Heartbeat Association. We give all our pregnant parents that phone number, they need to call this organization, leave a voicemail and the organization will get back to them in a timely manner, they will come out to the home and provide clothing, crib, food, car seat, and other things as needed. Next slide, please. How to locate an early Head Start program near you. You can go online and search for any early Head Start program or Head Start program nationwide with the following link below. Next slide, please. Massachusetts Department of Early Education and Care is another great website that you can go to, mass.gov backslash edu. Uh, I recommend going there to find child care in the city, in the state of Massachusetts. There is Child Care Choices of Boston, which will help with subsidies for child care. And in the Lynn Lawrence area, Child Care Circuit is available for assistance with child care subsidies as well. And in New Hampshire, I've put the links below regarding child care assistance in the CCRNR, which is the Child Care Resource Agencies information. And there's the link. Next slide. Child Care Resources of Greater Worcester, the information is below, as well as North Central Mass and Metro West Mass. Next slide, please. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, next, we'll hear from Julia Bush from Boston Medical Center's Street Credit Program about the new child care tax credit. Good morning, everyone, um, and congratulations to all the new and expectant parents. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the child tax credit today. Um, you can go to the next slide. All right, so what is the child tax credit? Um, it, it's been around for a, you know, a number of years, and it's, it's sort of just like it says. It's a tax credit available for families who file taxes and have eligible children. And a credit really means that you're getting money back. Um, it's been around for years, but in 2021, it's been ex expanded and possibly will become permanent. Next slide, please. So who's eligible for the child tax credit? Well, you have to file a US tax return to get the credit. Um, and the taxpayer, who is the one filing the return, must have a social security number or an ITIN. Um, you need to have a child that you can claim as your dependent. And that child needs to be related to you and must live with you for at least six months, um, unless it's a newborn. Um, you know, a newborn born in December of a year can be claimed as your dependent. Um, but if it's older than that, it must live with you for at least six months and the child must be a citizen or a resident alien and have a social security number. Um, and when you're filing, you do put the child's full name, their date of birth and their social security number on the tax return. And the credit is available for if you're a single tax filer, your income um, needs to be below $75,000 a year. And if you're married, your income as a household needs to be below $150,000 a year. And as your income goes above those amounts, you're just not eligible for the full credit, um, but you, it phases out. So then you, know, uh, you get a little bit less of the credit. All right, so let's compare um, the 2020 credit versus the 2021 child tax credit. 
Um, so in 20, up till 2020 this year, you would get $2,000 for each child under the age of 17. Um, going forward in 2021, you're going to receive $3,000 for each child ages six to 17 um, and $3,600 per year for each child under the age of six. So there's a real um, benefit for filing, especially if you have a new um, newborn child or young child. Um, previously in 2020 and before, the credit was only partially refundable, which just meant that you might not get that full $2,000 for each child. You might get um, back in your pocket. But going forward, you're going to get the full amount of the credit. So the $3,000 per year or the $3,600 per year, um, that's going to be money back in your pocket. Um, previously with the tax credit, you had to have some earned income to file your taxes to be eligible for the credit. Um, going forward, you don't need to have any earned income. So anybody with a child with a social security number, regardless of the amount of income, well, if they have no income, they should file a return because they are eligible for that. So that's, that's a big change, no earned income is required. Um, and like I said, the um, income limits have changed a bit. So now a single filer, can get the full credit with up to $75,000 a year in income and a household can be up to $150,000 a year with income. Um, now the biggest change of all um, going forward is that half of the credit, half of the annual credit. So um, if you have a child age of six to 17, half of the $3,000 or $1,500 is gonna be paid out in monthly installments beginning in July. So for example, if you had a seven-year-old child that you were claiming on your return, starting this July, 2021, you are gonna receive $250 each month from July to December for that child. Um, the second half of the credit, so the, the remaining $1,500 of that credit for that seven-year-old child, you'll claim next year on your 2021 taxes. Um, so that's, that's a big change. Um, they're paying six months of the credit in advance, and then you'll claim the, the remaining six months on your tax return next year. Um, can we go to the next slide? So you may ask, how can I get this child tax credit? Um, you really have to file your taxes. So um, I would say file your 2020 taxes. I know the tax deadline is coming up. Uh, it's May 17th. But for instance, our tax site is open through October. And to get all of those babies that were born in 2020, um, you know, claimed as your dependents and eligible for the child tax credit, you do need to file a 2020 tax return. Um, if your children have social security numbers, but you don't have an SSN, um, you need to apply to get an ITIN so that you can file your 2020 taxes. Um, the last thing I'll just mention, the IRS may develop an online portal where you can make adjustments and update information about changes with children, new babies, et cetera. Um, that is not up and running yet, um, but we do hope that is something that will, you know, maybe starting this summer will be up and running. So right now, the only way to get your children into the system is to file your taxes. Um, next slide, please. So I just have some contact information here, um, the way to contact me. Um, we are, I'm at Street Cred, which is at the Boston Medical Center, um, and we do free tax filing through um, October. We are using a virtual website that anybody throughout the country can go to getyourrefund.org. And if your household income is below $66,000 a year, um, you can get free tax filing services through getyourrefund.org. Um, so that's a really great resource to know about. Um, yeah, so I hope everybody files their taxes. You have a few more days, but then we will remain open through October for any late filers. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Natasha, Christine, Lisa, and Julia for such great information and resources. Um, we've been monitoring questions as you've been putting them into the Q&A. I see some have already been responded to. Um, and so we can start up with Q&A, answering your questions here. Um, any questions we don't get to today, we'll do our best to put responses in the follow-up email that you'll get from United Way later this week. Um, and so let me see if we have any questions. Um, 
I see a question that I think is for Julia. Um, what happens if I had twins born in 2020 and never got a stimulus for them? Uh, do I get it next year when I file or not at all? So if you had um, children born in 2020, you can file your taxes, you know, your 2020 taxes and claim any stimulus you did not receive for the first two stimulus payments. Um, so yeah, twins born in 2020 are eligible for stimulus payments for those first two stimulus payments. So the first one that we got last April, um, adults received $1,200 and each child was a $500 stimulus payment. So for twins, that would be $1,000. And then the second stimulus payment that came out in December, um, each taxpayer and dependent was eligible for $600 for with, so twins would add up to 1200. So that you're really going to be able to get $2,200. Um, and that's called a recovery rebate credit. They changed the name. It's really your stimulus payment. So the answer is yes, file a tax return, um, claim your twins as dependents and you can recover their stimulus that you did not receive. Thank you. Um, I think another question for you, Julia, are there any limits on how many kids can be claimed on the child care tax credit? If your children are all eligible, there are no limits that I'm aware of. So yeah, just put all of, if you have social security numbers, names, date of births, and they are your children that live with you, you can claim them. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, we have another question for Lisa from Leo. Um, translating on the fly. Um, someone applied in February. Um, she got something in the mail. Sounds like maybe her information wasn't complete. Can you, um, can you help answer that question? Sure. So if your information was not complete, what I would ask you to do is give me a call or you could email me. My email is Lisa C at leoinc.org and we can discuss it over the phone and I can tell you what items you may be missing. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Um, I see Carla just put in Lisa's contact information there. So for the person who asked that question, you can email her directly. Um, we saw another question um, from somebody on how to become a doula. Um, so that is something that we will um, respond to you directly. I think Andrea had asked uh, whoever asked that question to private message her directly with your contact information and we can respond to you after with, um, with the best um, response for your question. And let's see if we have any other questions. Um, Oh, I saw one and I lost it. Okay, um, for Julia, how can my daughter born in 2021 this year um, get a stimulus check? So a, um, a child born in 2021 is, you will be able to file, put them on your 2021 taxes. And those are taxes that you'll be filing sort of like this time next year, or maybe a little earlier, maybe February or March of 2021. Um, or February, March of 2022. That's when you file 2021 taxes. So she will not be eligible for the advanced payment of the child tax credit, but you'll be able to um, receive any 2021 stimulus payments and 2021 child tax credit when you file your 2021 tax return. Thank you, Julia. Don't go anywhere. We've got a couple more for you. <laughs> Um, okay, so one is I filed my taxes. I haven't gotten my return yet and it's been a month. Um, do you have any idea how long yeah. returns are coming? Oh, I know, I get this every day. I, I, you know, the IRS is really backed up this year. It, it began last year during the beginning of COVID. They kind of shut down for a number of months. So they are actually still processing some of the paper returns from last year and I've been hearing that, you know, there are delays. I will say the, um, you know, this may be too late for you, but going forward, if you can put direct deposit information in your tax return, that's usually the best way to get a quick refund. Um, 
but you know, you a lot of people are in this same um, position as you. If you Google like where's my tax refund, um, there is a way to check on the IRS website. But you'll also see a lot of articles that they're just behind this year, and it, it's really unfortunate. So, um, you know, I'm sorry. Good note, direct deposit. Um, another one, Julia, in February, I applied for an ITIN number to file taxes, and I haven't received any answers. If I was approved or not, what should I do? Okay, so I would say go to, uh, I'm not sure where you, you did that through. I know that Boston Legal Services is very happy to help people get ITIN. So um, that's one resource I would put out there if you're interested, but I would, um, I just keep following up. I know that a lot of these governmental agencies are just have backlogs. Um, so just the more you can follow up with whoever you uh, applied through, you know, to find out where you stand. Um, but if you're having trouble, I would, you know, look for free, like legal help. And like I said, I know Boston Legal Services is there to do that exact thing. So you might want to contact them. And then another one that just came in, how can a baby get a stimulus if we don't have taxes? So if it's a baby born in 2020, you can file your 2020 tax return. And like I mentioned, you can file a tax return even if you don't have any income. You can file a tax return just to get stimulus payments. Um, and to file a tax return, you do need a social security number or an ITIN. Um, and you need that for your child as well. Um, if the baby was born in 2021, you're going to have to wait to file those 2021 taxes next year. So I, I'm just not sure when that baby was born, but yes, file taxes is how you get the stimulus. The IRS won't know about your babies until you file taxes. Thank you. Um, let me see if we have any other questions. Um, I did direct deposit and I still don't have my tax return. Julia, that's for you. <laughs> mm, I know, I'm sorry. I, yeah, it. I, well, here's what I'll do. I can give um, Carla the link to check your refund online. There's an IRS um, portal where you can put in your social security number and the amount of refund you're expecting. And it can give you, sometimes it can tell you if there's a problem or if it's processing, um, it, it is just taking longer than we all would like. Okay. I think that might be it. We have another minute or so for questions, but I think that might be it. Let me just see if we have any others come in. Um, another question about becoming a doula. Um, again, I think that was from Marie. Um, if you want to private message either Andrea or me, we can um, follow up with you directly on information on how to become a doula. Um, okay, uh, one more question. Um, I have applied already and I haven't gotten an answer yet. I'm not sure if this is about health insurance or if this is about Leo. I think this is from Julio. Julio, if you want to private message one of the panelists with some more information, we can follow up with you directly afterward so that we can get you an answer to your question. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you all for asking um, some really great questions. I hope that you were able to get the answers that you needed. Um, if you have any others, um, feel free to message us um, privately before the session's over or um, we'll be sending information out after to everybody who joined today. Um, so thank you for joining us and United Way today for this event. Um, as I mentioned, keep an eye on your email after this um, for the recording of the event, as well as all of the resources that you heard today. Um, as a reminder, all of the events from this week can be viewed on United Way's website um, if there is a day that you couldn't join or an event that you want to watch again. Um, to close out today's event, we're going to show the basics video um, to explore um, through movement and play that highlights the importance of play. 
If you want more information about the basics, you can sign up at the link on the screen to receive weekly text messages giving information and tips on how to help your child grow happy and smart while supporting your relationship with them. We hope to see you tomorrow um, to celebrate reading and your families with Raising a Reader. Congratulations again to all of the new and expecting parents and thank you for joining. How do children learn to explore? Yes, go, 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 go. Good job. Physical activity, exploration, and play are important for many reasons. <laughs> yes, One go, go, is the go, development go. of coordinated, strong, and healthy bodies. Another is that physical activities exercise the mind just as much as the body. The youngest children learn by touching, reaching, grasping, and experimenting on their surroundings. Each new phase of physical development brings new opportunities for learning and development. How did you think about letting her start to explore? Oh, she had to run in the house. <laughs> this whole floor, whole first floor was hers. So we just, you know, let her just explore. I will get down there together and crawl with her. There are simple ways to support the movements that babies make. Hey, pretty cat. You're so pretty. One is to make sure that they spend some time on their stomach every day. This is called tummy time. During tummy time, babies raise their heads and make crawling motions. Gradually, their upper body gets stronger until they can actually crawl. Tummy time also gives them a new view of their surroundings. Once children develop more mobility, you can find activities where they can move around more. Go ahead, sweetie. I look for certain things that she can do or can't do at all or yeah. things that she may need assistance with. Yes, right. If children are working through something, it can be tempting to jump in quickly and show them the answer. But it's better to stand back and give them a little time to figure it out. Give them a chance first. In the house, we kind of let her fall. We want her to be able to learn her boundaries. We want her to be able to test her physical limits and see what she can and can't do, which is a part of her development. You know, the more she learns about her body and herself and what she can do, I feel like the better she'll be prepared. Yeah. They'll be developing coordination and problem-solving skills at the same time. There's a row of about, I guess, 10, 11 U-shaped bike racks. Right. And she decided to walk under all of them. And then the last one, she decided to hang from it. Uh -huh. And I hadn't seen her do that before. All right. So I believe she was testing her limits on that. I right. believe she's getting more confidence right. physically. So don't underestimate the value of play. I think it's really important for them. It's a way they can explore the world around them. Step back and watch where your child's curiosity takes them. Young children are like scientists, and you can cultivate their interest in the world by enabling exploration. Watch them, and you will learn about the things that they are interested in and the very interesting people they are becoming. How do you encourage exploration through movement and play? Which of your family members and friends should also see this video? Please join us and help spread the word. <laughs>